Let's talk about rent. It is probably a surprise to exactly zero of the people watching this video that rent has gone absolutely crazy over the last couple of years since the beginning of the pandemic, but there are some signs that rent growth is slowing down and could even actually reverse a little bit over the next couple of months. So today we are going to get into the state of rent across the United States, which markets are doing well, which ones are struggling, which asset classes are doing well. So you as a current or prospective investor can make informed investments investing decisions. And we have an awesome free data giveaway for you today. So you're going to want to stick around for this one. Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Dave Meyer. I'm the VP of Data and Analytics at Bigger Pockets and author of the brand new book, Real Estate by the Numbers, which teaches you to be an analytical, data-driven real estate investor. You can check it out and buy it at biggerpockets.com if you're interested. With that out of the way, let's get into today's topic, which is rent. So rent has been growing like crazy over the last couple of years, as you probably know if you're a landlord or if you're a renter. Back before before the pandemic started, the median rent in the US was about $1,640. And now just two and a half years later, it's almost $2,100, which is 27% growth. Usually it can take almost a decade, probably like seven or eight years usually to see 27% rent growth. But we saw that in just two and a half years. So this is one of, if not the single fastest period of rent growth in the United States history. I actually couldn't find any data that shows that that rent was actually has actually grown faster than this in the past. The other thing that's happened over the last couple of years that's worth noting is that vacancy has been at nearly one of the lowest levels it's ever been. Right now, vacancy is at the lowest it's been since 1982. So it's been 40 years since we've seen this level of vacancy. So this combination of these two factors, really high and growing rent, as well as really low vacancies, has been a very good time for people who are existing rental property owners or landlords because they could expect rent to grow and actually grow faster than the rate of inflation. And they had very little fear of vacancy. Generally speaking, this is of course on a national basis, but generally speaking, it has been a pretty good time to be a landlord over the last couple of years in terms of rent. But things are starting to change. Just like with the rest of the economy, we're starting to see the economy slow down. We're starting to see the housing market enter a correction. The rental market is really no different. We're starting to see things change a little bit. And that is most easily understood and measured by the year over year growth rate. When I say year over year, that basically means comparing one month in 2022 to one month in 2021. So let's just take September, for example. If you compare this September, September 22 to last September, it is rent has gone up 11% according to Zillow. And that's super high. In a normal year, that would be just crazy to think about, but obviously nothing is normal these days. The reason we want to look at this year over year rental growth is because rent data, just like housing market data, is seasonal. This doesn't really have anything to do with seasons. It just means that over the course of the year, rents tend to go up and they peak in the summer, then they go down a little bit over the winter, and then they fall the same pattern up again to the next summer. By looking at this year over year data, it allows us to strip away some of that variability over the course of the year and just focus on the long term trend. And the long term trend is that rent was up 11% year over year. Like I said, that's crazy. That's one of the highest we've ever seen, but it was actually higher and has come down quite a lot. Back in February of 2022, the uh, the year over year growth rate was 17%. But it's important to note that the pace of growth is really starting to slow down. It went up and spiked at 17% year over year, and now it's starting to come down and it's at, it's still crazy, but a little bit more modest 11%. When I look at individual markets, because just like the housing market, the rental market is completely regional. So what I did was looked at the top 100 regional markets the largest regional, not, they're not ranked in any way. It's just like the biggest hundred markets in the United States. And what I found was that only four of those hundred markets have seen year over year price declines. So only 4% of markets are in that sort of long-term trend seeing rents go down. If you're curious what those markets are, they are Spokane, Washington, Reno, Nevada, Minneapolis, and St. Paul, Minnesota. But the other 96 are still going up year over year. And as I mentioned, we do have a free giveaway for you. So 
If you want to get this data for every single market in the country, including your own, you can do that. Just go to biggerpockets.com slash rental data. We'll also put it, a link in the show description, but for free, you can get data on rents in the top largest hundred markets. You can see year over year data and month over month data, which we're going to talk about in just a second. Those four markets were going the slowest, but there are still markets that are going absolutely nuts. In fact, Miami is still growing at 27% year over year, which is absurd. New Jersey, uh, Jersey City, Jersey is 29%. And Lubbock, Texas is the number one fastest growing rental market with 31% growth. So that's what's going on sort of the long term year over year trends. And normally, like during a normal year, I don't really look at month over month data because again, it's seasonal. It's not as important what's going on. But during a changing market, it is important to look at month over month data because it can just kind of give you some clues as to what might happen over the next couple of years. And what we're seeing is interesting here. There was a recent report from RealPage that showed that for the first time in two years, rent prices on a national basis went down. And it only went down 0.2%, so very, very modestly. And don't read too much into this yet, because as I said, rents are seasonal and rents going down in September is actually normal. So by rents going down 0.2% in September, that represents a return to the normal pattern of what happens in rents. Remember, it goes up and it spikes over the summer, then it starts to go down over the fall and winter. And so that is notable because it is returning to a normal pattern. In 2021, that was the unusual concerning year where it refused, where rents just basically refused to go down in the normal seasonal pattern. Instead, they just kept going up and up and up. And that's not healthy. That's not good for the housing market. That's not good for tenants. It's not good for anyone. So it is good to see, in my opinion, that rents are starting to return to this normal seasonal pattern um, that they start to fall in in uh, in the fall. Could that mean that they'll fall in, in a more broad term in the future? Yes, it can. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. But like as of now, if you're just looking at the rent that's out today, not concerning, in my opinion. It's just going back to the way it always works prior to 2021. Again, I looked at these top 100 markets. And so what I found when I looked at those is that 41 of those 100 markets saw declines in September. And now again, I just want to keep reiterating this point. That is normal. That is normally what happened in a normal year. You'd probably see like 90 of the 100, maybe 95 of the 100 markets decline from August to September. This year we saw 41, which is, in my opinion, good because we're seeing a return to normal behavior, normal patterns in the rental market. But on the other hand, we we're still seeing 59 markets that just refuse to behave normally. And they're just saying, you know, seasonality be damned. We're still going up month over month month, which is really crazy. And again, to me, points to the market hasn't fully corrected. It's still pretty unhealthy because some of these markets are still starting to go up. Now, that's what's going on on a, on a month to month basis. Looking forward, it's sort of hard to tell what's going to go on because as we enter this really, I mean, we're already in a very uncertain economic period, but as we continue our path into this uncertain economic period, there's a couple things that can happen that you should at least be thinking of. Number one is that in a recession, two things can happen. Um, one is that if people lose their jobs or inflation keeps going up to the point where people are just losing their spending power, it can force them to combine households. And that basically means rather than living on your own or people who used to live on their own, maybe they go live with a family member, maybe they find a roommate, and that actually lessens overall demand, right? The total number of households, that's like the total number of uh, owner-occupied houses, no total number of occupied rental units, that could contract. And if that contracts, that lessens overall demand and that could bring vacancy up and that could bring rents down a little bit. The other thing, and, and so, so that's worth noting, like if we enter a recession, that could happen. But there's sort of this like counteracting force there, which is that um, during it, that housing is just super unaffordable right now. And so demand for rent has actually remained pretty high and is likely to remain pretty high uh, other than those people who might combine households. So I do see that there is some downside risk, like rent I think could go down a little bit uh, over the next couple of years, but maybe let's say the next year or two, but I don't think it will be that dramatic. Let me just share with you some historical context to make, make that point clear. And of course, we don't know what's going to happen, but looking at historical data is super helpful. It really can help us understand sort of um, where we might be going. 
And back in the Great Recession, housing prices fell from peak to trough. So the highest they were at during the, uh, you know, in the mid 2000s to when they bottomed out in 2011, they went down about 27%. During that time, the max amount rents went down was 6%. So you see that rents, rent prices are just a lot stickier than housing prices. Housing prices, because there's a lot of equity, there's more emotion in it, um, it goes up and down a lot more. But because rent tends to be sticky, people need a place to live, um, rents do not tend to go down. And in many recessions, they've actually gone up. So that is just something to consider that rents uh, could go down, I think maybe a couple percentage points at most, but they're much more likely to stay flat in my opinion over the next couple of years. The last thing I do want to just point out is in multifamily, there are a couple trends that are worth noting. Um, so these are not small multifamily, these are like large multifamily apartment buildings if you invest in that kind of stuff. Two things are happening. One, vacancy has um, ticked up back to pre-pandemic levels. On a historic level, it is still going, it is still pretty good, but it is starting to look like there's going to be more vacancy in the multifamily space at a time when a lot of new supply is coming online. According to some research that we did, apartment construction has reached 40 year highs and there are more than a million, there are about a million units underway. And we are starting to see that in the second half of 2023, a lot of those units are coming on. Just in Q4 of 2022, we're expecting 110,000 units to come on. If vacancy is already starting to tick up and a lot of those apartments come online, that could mean in the multifamily space specifically, we could see a bit higher vacancy and a bit lower rents. Of course, this is all very regional, so you're gonna wanna see what's going on in your individual market, but I just wanted to call that out for anyone who is investing in multifamily space, that that is one of the trends that you should look at. That's basically what's going on with rent. Hopefully this is helpful to you. Overall, my advice here is that if you are either refinancing, you own current rental properties, or you're thinking about getting into the market, I would be very conservative in underwriting your rent. So over the last couple of years, the last two years, it was pretty safe to buy an investment property and assume that rent was gonna go up three, five percent by the next year. Right now, it might go up. I honestly think there's a good chance it goes up. You know, I said it could go down a few percentage points. I wouldn't be surprised if it grew a few percentage points. I think it's kind of like plus or minus 5%. So I wouldn't be surprised to see if it go up. But just to be safe, I would underwrite your deals with no rent growth, at least for the next year, just to be safe because there is so much economic uncertainty right now. That's personally what I will be doing and it's what I would recommend that you do as well, just to make sure that you're not getting yourself into a difficult situation where you might not be collecting the amount of rent that you want. So that's my best advice. And if rent goes up, then that's just gravy, right? That's great, you'll be happy, you'll just get a bit of extra income every single month. Hopefully this is helpful to you. If you have any questions about this, please either let me know in the comments below, or you can always reach out to me on Instagram. I'm pretty active there where I'm at the data deli. Don't forget to go download the free spreadsheet I created for you on Bigger Pockets. It really is 100% free. Just go to biggerpockets.com slash rental data and check that out. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all next week.